Pitra Radhika and Dharavi. How did Asia's largest slum cluster manage to bend the curve? My colleague Radhika with this report. Take a look. These narrow lanes of Dharavi tell a tale of despair, struggle, suffering and resilience. Labelled as the Covid hotspot of Mumbai, this slum cluster, which is Asia's largest, is slowly showing signs of flattening the curve with a drop in the number of cases over the last 10 days. From 80 to 90 cases daily at the start of May, Dharavi started reporting an average of 20 cases a day in June. In an area where social distancing is a dream, with 12 people living in one shanty, the COVID fight was not an easy one. Thirty-seven-year-old Sushma Thambe from Mukund Nagar in Dharavi is at her neighborhood doctor. She lost her mother-in-law to COVID-19. Her husband is in hospital after testing positive. Sushma thankfully isn't infected. आपको डॉक्टर्स ने क्या-क्या बताया है आप सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग वो जो हाइजीन क्लीन क्लेनलीनेस उन सब के बारे में क्या बताएं नॉर्मली तो हाथ वॉश करना सेनेटाइजर ही करना डिस्टेंस टाइम रखना किधर भी जाने का तो पहला मास लगा के ही रहने का ये सब बताया गया है लेकिन मेरे को मालूम नहीं था कि मेरे हस्बैंड the BMC says aggressive contact tracing, isolation, screening and targeted testing brought cases down. Fever clinics, mobile dispensaries and door-to-door -door surveys helped to isolate high-risk cases quickly. 6.5 lakh people have been screened in Dharavi. Through 5 lakh door-to-door -door screenings, 16,000 people were screened through mobile clinics and municipal dispensaries. 12 quarantine facilities were set up with 3,840 beds. 8,500 have been quarantined here and 38,000 home quarantined. Previously, they used to feel that means Corona means is the end of the day, you are finished and all. Then we convince them that see, the 100 people are there, out of that 85 people will become normal. They will not get caught of the Corona. People started believing us and they came to know that whatever we are doing, we are doing for the betterment of their life, for themselves also and for the people are surrounding them also. The challenge now is in keeping infections down. People are out of their homes and establishments have opened up. Focused approach and sustained efforts have helped bring Dharavi numbers down. But if this trend has to continue, people cannot afford to lower their guards because Dharavi's battle against COVID-19 is the first and most important step in winning Mumbai's battle against COVID-19. In Dharavi, with Vijay Tabriz, this is Radhika Ramaswamy. Well, bringing in Mufti Isla, who joins us from Srinagar. Mufti, we've been discussing how today is the second day where the number of recoveries in India is more than the number of active cases. And Jammu and Kashmir over the last couple of days has uh, reflected that trend as well, with there being more cured than active patients. Well, that's correct. And, you know, what happened last week was that uh, there was some fault in testing. And uh, people here were quite alarmed by this because all of a sudden in one week there were some 1,500 positive cases uh, who had come. Uh, but later what happened was a senior journalist and his crib, when they were tested positive, they kind of uh, didn't take it. And uh, they had this whiff that uh, perhaps because they had not visited office for a long, long time, they need to go for retesting, which they did, and all of them have now come negative. That has kind of thrown a question at this particular lab uh, in Srinagar that whether all the tests were uh, faulty or they need to be retested again. And uh, precisely that is what has happened. And it kind of swelled the number. 1,500, as I said, uh, was, uh, you know, reported, positives reported in one week. Uh, now government has said that uh, all those people who were testing at that laboratory, they need to be retested. Uh, that said, uh, we have a kind of a swell uh, in last two weeks. Uh, that is partly to be uh, with the inbound travelers who had come from different areas. More than 1.2 lakh people had come in and that had kind of, you know, uh, th that had kind of seen a steep 
in the number of COVID cases. Uh, at this juncture, I can tell you uh, there are more than 4,500 uh, COVID positive cases, but there have been a lot of recoveries. The recoveries are uh, in the percentage of 40, and uh, that's good, and it's improving. As we speak, uh, you know, some kind of an activity you will see here on the Dal Lake also. The Shikaras are back after a long, long time. Uh, there's been some activity, although uh, the Shikara people are saying that they're not finding the elusive, uh, you know, customers. Uh, but clearly, some sort of an activity has really started, although they would like that uh, uh, their livelihood uh, should be restored once again. Uh, that will take some time because people don't have really the confidence uh, to come in. As we were walking on the shores of the Dal Lake, we didn't see many morning uh, walkers uh, today also. Apparently, that is because of the fair and because large number of cases have been reported over the last two weeks. Uh, even I used to take a lot of jaunts here, especially on the uh, weekends. Now, I've also started to miss those fishing and uh, swimming, uh, you know, sessions, which I did, especially on the weekend. But hopefully, uh, once the confidence is restored, really, you'll see a lot of activity here on the Dal Lake uh, with me also taking some. Uh, jaunts at the Dal Lake, especially on the weekend. Right, Mufti. So a lot of people, of course, still hesitant to step out in uh, Jammu and Kashmir. Stay on with us. Now, despite uh, easing of curbs in uh, Kerala, uh, citizens are not stepping out, which has not helped auto drivers who are waiting to make some money after the lockdown. Here's a report from Trivandrum. We are at an auto stand in Eastport in Thiruvananthapuram, which is one of the major uh, junctions in Thiruvananthapuram city. Here we can see that autos have been parked at this uh, stand over here. Um, many of these auto drivers say that right from morning, the early morning they are here, but a very few people uh, come in uh, to uh, take the services. He came in at about 6.30 to this auto stand here. So far, he has not got a single person. And he was explaining that they keep hand sanitizers here like this. And every, every time a passenger comes, they actually uh, give it in their hands, sanitize their hands. They even sanitize the auto seats after every passenger goes out. So that is how they have been uh, working uh, when they uh, get customers. Situation for them is really bad. They are worried about the increasing cases. The passengers are also worried. But at the same time, it's their livelihood, it's their means of livelihood. They have no other way uh, to sustain themselves. Well, bringing in Neetu, who joins us from Kerala. Neetu, from uh, Kashmir to Kerala, the situation seems largely similar with businesses keen to resume, but at the same time, customers hesitant to step out. That's true. If you look at the public transport, mainly uh, even if it's the buses or the autos, uh, many of them say that they are not getting enough uh, customers or the number of people coming out are large. People are also scared. But if you look at the streets, we can see that there are a lot of vehicles which are plying on the road. But mostly these are two-wheelers or uh, uh, four-wheelers and people also prefer to step out in their private vehicles. We are at this Palium Junction in Tiruvananthapuram. This is one of the busiest junctions. Um, we can see the amount of vehicles that are there. Doesn't uh, It looks like things are getting back to normal. But at the same time, it's mostly the private vehicles. Now, the church that we can see there, though uh, it's a Palium church, though religious organizations, uh, places of worship can open from the 9th of this month, the, the church has also not yet opened, owing to this uh, situation, the COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, the Palium Juma Masjid has also not opened. So many places of religious worship in the state, even today, has not opened. Uh, owing to the rising cases and they feel that at least for a couple of weeks uh, that kind of a restriction is needed. People shouldn't come to uh, oh, one area so that uh, the, the cases increase. Now yesterday the number of cases reported were about 65. Majority were people who come in from abroad or from other states. Um, only five were through contacts. Uh, but uh, this uh, it's slightly uh, lesser when you look at the numbers of the previous days because the two days before that it was 91 then we had 107 and 111 cases also in the last week being reported uh, ever since uh, people started coming into the state uh, from abroad and other states the numbers are increasing but the state government say that this is much in expected lines and they want people to 
continue with the precautions that they have been taken follow social distancing norms and wear masks when they are out in the public place because that is the only way by breaking the chain or breaking this transmission from one person to other that uh, this disease can be uh, controlled all right stay on with us neetu let's also go across to rupeshree who joins us from delhi uh, rupeshree in fact, stay on with us, Rupeshi. I'll come back to you in just a bit. But uh, before that, uh, let's take a look at this report that my colleague Shugoto has filed from Kolkata. I am currently outside the Dakshineshwar Kali Temple, one of the most revered places of worship in Kolkata. And this temple has only just opened up. And I'll try and show you the measures taken by the temple authorities for devotees who would be coming here from now on. So that's my thermal scanning, the temperature scanning that has been done by uh, the guards over here outside the temple premises. And I'll try and show you what else is in store. Dedicated pathways to ensure social distancing with specified footmarks have been created inside the temple premises to ensure that the devotees who come into the temple maintain the adequate health safety norms before they enter into the temple. We are entering currently a fumigation tunnel that has been set up right outside the gates, right outside the entrance of the main temple premises. So that's the fumigation tunnel. And now we are inside the main temple premises.